Hi, I'm Ivan from Chaos and today I will show you how to add light to an exterior scene. After learning how to set daytime lighting using the sun and sky system and an HDRI, it's time to explore how to create night lighting. In this tutorial, we will explore different types of artificial lights, add a nice background with natural lighting by importing an HDRI image and try out different automated lighting systems created with V-Ray Light Gen 2. We will also learn how to save different states of our project with snapshots and finish by making some minor corrections to the image in Lightmix. Let's change the denoiser from V-Ray Denoiser to Intel Open Image Denoise. I will use the interactive render further and for that kind of rendering it's better to use Intel Open Image Denoiser or NVIDIA AI. They are really fast and give good representation how image should look like after the render is finished. Also, I will delete the light mix and disable the light gen dome with the HDRI because I will use the dome light with the sky and the sun. Start the interactive render again. I want the render to fit the frame buffer so I will just click F. Let's change the sun position and move it close to the ground with a small angle. We can tint the color of the sky to be blue to imitate the moon effect or directly place it on the ground with an angle of zero or below. It's kind of dark so I will slightly decrease the exposure value. We will also need to place artificial lights inside the house. To simulate that kind of lighting, first I will create a rectangle light from the V-Ray Lights toolbar to imitate linear LED lighting. So let's place it right here. After that I will draw a region on the V-Ray frame buffer because I want to render only the parts that are important to me now. Once it's created, it will appear in the Asset Editor and we can control its parameters. First, I want to slightly decrease the intensity of the light. If I expand the right flyout menu, you will see more options to control the appearance of the light. I will decrease the length of the light to show you one very useful parameter, the directionality. It is a great way to focus the direction of the light. You will notice how visible the direction of the light is if we increase that parameter. I think that a smaller value will be ok for that purpose and I will also increase the length to cover the wooden part. Now let's create an overall interior light. For that purpose I will use a spherical light. It will light the space nicely and create an appropriate mood. Click on the viewport and drag to specify the radius of the light. Then place it into the room. Rename the light in the asset editor and have a look at the settings. First I will increase the intensity to light up the space more. Also I will decrease the radius of the light from the size parameter because it is too big right now. As you can see, the light source is visible as well as the reflection of it and we don't want that. To fix that, we can just make the light invisible from the options below and disable the visibility in the reflections. Also from the settings, we can change the color of the lights directly by picking a color or by using a Kelvin temperature, but I will leave it to white for now. The third light I will create is an IES light. It will create an interesting light profile on the wall. To simulate that light, click on the viewport and drag around. Once you release the mouse, Vero will ask you to load a light profile from your drive. Move it to the right place in the project. We can barely see the light, so we need to increase its intensity. Enable the intensity in Mumias in the Asset Editor and now you can type the desired intensity. 
Follow the same steps, I have created a few more lights in the scene. Now I am ready with the artificial lights so I can add an interesting night sky with clouds in the background. But before I do that, I would like to save the current state of the project. I can do it either by saving the file or by saving a snapshot. That way I can always turn back to the exact state of my project. Let's right click on the right toolbar in Rhino. Choose snapshots and save the current state. Name it and choose what settings to save in this state. Click on the select all toggle to save them all. Now we have the state saved and we can focus on adding an interesting background. To start off, I will create and use a dome light. The benefit is that the light will be generated based on the 360 degree image I will use. Click on the dome light. Once it's created, Vira will ask for an HDRI texture. I have already downloaded one, so I will click cancel. Rename the light so you can find it easily if we include it in the light mix. Also, the light from the new dome light is mixing with the light from the sky dome, so I will disable the second. If we hold Ctrl and click on the textures tab, we can show both of them simultaneously. The texture that I have already downloaded from Cosmos is Sun 03A, and I will just drag it to the texture slot of the dome one and enable the texture swap. Now the dome light is using the HDRI texture, but obviously it's too bright. We can either increase the exposure value from the camera settings, or we can just decrease the dome light intensity. Let's select the texture. To horizontally rotate it, I will just choose a spherical mapping type. Now I can horizontally rotate the texture and achieve different results with each rotation. Once we are ready, we can save it as a state of the project in case we want to make more changes. Now I want to be sure that this is the best option for my project, so I will let V-Ray automatically generate more options for the environment lighting. To do that, stop the interactive rendering and open LightGen. I already have a collection of downloaded night HDRIs, so I will enable the custom library and select the folder with the maps. Then I will specify the variations and generate them. Once they are generated, go ahead and start interactive rendering again. After the light scenarios are generated, they will be presented to us as thumbnails and we just need to click on the one we like to adopt the settings. But before that, I want to disable the option Disable Lights on Application. If it's enabled, when we click on the one of the thumbnails, Vray will disable the rest of the lights. You notice that the dome light is very bright, so we need to reduce the intensity. Ok, I think that this looks great, I will save it as a third stage of the project. Now let me show you why I have stored all these three stages of my project. Double click on the first stage and Rhino will use all the settings from that stage. If we click on the second or the third stages, Rhino will use these settings instead. By doing this, I can easily have three light scenarios or more in one Rhino file instead of saving more than one project. It's time to prepare for the production render, so go ahead and stop the interactive one. First, disable interactive rendering, otherwise Chaos Cloud will not render the image. Change the denoise setting to V-Ray Denoiser for more precise denoising. Click on the Render Elements tab to create a light mix render element and set the group by to group instances. That way, Vira will group all the instanced lights into one. We can render our image locally just by clicking on the render button or on Chaos Cloud 
by clicking on the cloud button and sending the project to the cloud. Go ahead and specify the desired resolution. Once the render is finished, I will download it and load the EXR image to the frame buffer. It contains all the light layers and I just need to switch from RGB to light mix. Now you will notice that all the lights from the project are listed here and I can easily enable or disable each one of them. The light in the interior is very white, so I will change the color to something warmer. Also, I will make some tiny core correction. First, I will add sharpening to the image. Then, I will add lens effects. Also, I will add two core correction layers. I would like to make the image look like a photo from real estate app and in real estate photography, most of the images are very saturated and their contrast is increased. So first, I will add a hue saturation layer and slightly increase the saturation and then I will add an exposure layer. This is a great layer because from here I can easily fine tune the exposure, suppress the overexposed pixels and add contrast to the image. Ok, I think that this is enough for the image. Now we know how to make beautiful night images and use more than one approach to achieve it. See you in the next video.